I'm going to be doing a demonstration in colored pencil and blending with powder blender. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. If you have not heard of Powder Blender before, I do have a video, my initial review. I will have a card pop up, no, this side here, so you can check that out. This was my third time using Powder Blender and I wanted to test a few things. So I tested burnishing a lot on some of my initial layers to see if the texture fixative spray would really add enough texture that I could go on top of it. Spoiler alert totally worked. I burnished so much on these leaves and once I sprayed that texture fixative I was able to go right back over it with all the detail I needed which was really cool. For this piece I have worked on a piece of Fabriano Artistico Extra White Hot Press 140 pound watercolor paper and I gessoed it. That part, the gessoed part, is super important. You want to use this product on a non-absorbent surface. So your two main options are going to be either sanded paper, like what's typically used for pastels. I used that in this video. Or if you want to use, like I did here, the Fabriano Artistico and gesso the paper, you can do that as well. I gessoed it the night before, so it was completely dry before I started working on the project. The gesso that I used for this is by Liquitex and I airbrushed it onto the paper. If you do want to gesso paper and you don't want to invest in an expensive airbrush, you can get the hobby kit that you can pick up for like $30 on Amazon. I'll put a link in the video description and you can gesso it that way. And when I mix the gesso, I mix gesso with water so that it's about the consistency of milk. And then I applied several layers of that to the paper, letting it dry in between each layer. You don't want to deal with any of that. The sanded paper works great too. I have not decided for sure which is my favorite way to work. I'm leaning right now towards the gessoed paper, but I've not done enough projects on either to really be able to say for certain what in the end will be my favorite way to work. If you're a supporters over on Patreon, the two hour version of this tutorial is available for you now, complete with voiceover. So make sure to head over and check that out. So as I lay down the background colors here, notice that I'm essentially scribbling. I am making a huge mess. I don't care which direction my pencil is going in. None of this matters. When I go over it with the powder blender, it is going to blend out completely. Now I am using my oil-based pencils. This is the Polychromos. These will blend very, very well with, with the powder blender. I don't really like the results I've gotten using wax-based pencils with this product, but the oil-based blend so smoothly, so soft, very, very nicely. The luminance and other wax-based pencils, I keep those for my final details anything that I'm not going to need to blend out. You can see really messy there. Now I'm going over it with the powder blender. Now with the powder blender, you do not need very much of that. A little bit goes a very, very long ways. I'm using a pan pastel blender on that one. I love that blender with this. It's just a nice size. I found with the smaller ones, it takes a lot longer, the small sponges that come with the kit. I really like the pastel blender there. Adding another layer of some of my darker colors. Now you can see as you continuously add layers, it doesn't get that much darker. When you wanna get things a lot darker, you can spray your texture fixative that comes in the kit and then go over it. That will let your colors start getting a lot darker, just the layering process that we do. So as I leave that alone now, I am moving on to blocking in my leaves. Now this is where I was talking about earlier that I really burnished. I pushed super, super hard with my pencils here just so that I could find out what would happen if that texture fixative really would add enough texture back into the paper. So being very messy here again, just blocking in approximately where my lights and my darks go. Still only using the polychromos at this stage. This was a fun piece because I got to use so many of the yellow colors I don't normally use in my kit. I always think it's so odd that colored pencils come with so many yellows because you rarely use them. This was an exception, so it was kind of nice to have all those colors this time. Lots and lots of leaves. This reference photo comes from wildlifereferencephotos.com, so if you want to draw this guy yourself, you can pick that up over there. Just mainly blocking in my lights and my darks. I'm not really focusing on detail being super accurate at this stage. And while I am blending some of it a little bit with the powder blender, for the most part, my blending here is just being done by burnishing, by pushing very hard with a pencil to jam it into the paper. Now this is the really cool thing with this. Look at how I can take an eraser and erase anything I've blended previously. So I can come through and get these circles 
which I later on decided I kind of hated. And so I blended back over it with the powder blender, which smoothed everything out very nicely. It darkened it up quite a bit. But I feel like when you're working with this product, it's very forgiving. You can change your mind and go over an area without messing anything up. So here you can see I went back over, added more green. And I'm going to blend that out with just a little bit of the powder blender. Coming back over and adding some more contrast to my leaves here. Now I'm going to block in, I'm going to leave the background how it is, and I'm going to block in my main dark and light areas on the cat. I'm using the smaller blender on little areas like the eye. Now with this, if you guys have used odorless mineral spirits before, you may have found where you're able to blend over many areas, lights and darks, and it doesn't smudge that badly. If you do that with the powder blender, you will smudge everything completely. So you definitely want to pay attention to which areas you're blending. In this case, I wouldn't want to take a, the blender and blend over the eye and the fur next to it. It would just kind of smudge that whole area together. Now this area of the ear, I will be coming back through later on with all of the white hairs. So I need to get the inside of the ear very dark so that the white will show up. All of the areas that I'm doing right now need to be a lot darker than my end result needs to be because I know I'm going to come back over it with my lighter pencils, with the whites and the creams to make the little hairs on the cat. And in order for that to look right, I've got to get the darks in first. This is a layering process, very, very much how I work in oil or acrylic paints. Getting the light on his back. You've got light coming through trees or bushes or something, and it's casting this really cool pattern on his back. So I've got to make sure I've got a lot of contrast in there. And I know this looks weird. He almost looks like a calico at this stage. He won't when I'm finished, though. So I'm blending that out. I'm using that Pan Pastel Blender again. You can see everything's very smudged and messy. Going to go ahead and darken things up a little bit more before I spray this. And the great thing is with the te the texture spray, texture fixative, I knew there was a word for it there somewhere. With the texture fixative, you can spray as many times as you want. So if you wanted to spray at this stage and then get the darks here a lot darker, you could have done that. There's no limit, like you can only spray it three times in a piece. I only sprayed once in this piece, but you can spray it as often as you need to. Just let it dry in between layers. Getting a lot of the orange in there now too. I wanna make sure I've got really nice color saturation in here. So I pulled quite a few oranges and reds. I even pulled a lot of magentas in this later on. You guys know every time I use oranges, I'm going to use magentas. Like if I'm working on a giraffe, there will be magenta in his coat for the shadows. I love the oranges and the kind of reddish brown colors mixed with magenta. They work so well together. A few of these darker areas. And then right after this, I'm going to go ahead and spray it. I sprayed it with the texture fixative. I let it dry overnight just because I was done working for the night. Came back the next day and now I'm working over this. Look at how well the paint or the pencils are sticking to my previous layers that I had completely burnished. I had totally flattened out the tooth of that paper, but my touch-up texture, I keep calling it touch-up texture. That's the one that you, that you paint on. The texture fixative, the spray, that brought the tooth back. And I've used texture fixative type things before. They don't work, They're not well at all with colored pencil. This really, really does. I think, I wanna say it was Krylon made when I had tried. I did not, I was not impressed with the results. This though is amazing. So I'm going to go ahead and start working on the detail of the cat here. I've got the little dots for the nose. Now my dots are, some are white and some are purple and black just to create that texture. Now I'm going to start drawing in, and actually I'm missing a clip of the video here, but I drew in all of the little hairs around the face, under the eye, and on the muzzle with my white luminance pencil. That wasn't coming out quite as bright as I wanted, so I mixed touch-up texture with the titanium white powder that comes in the kit. I do have a video showing you how to do that. I'll have a card pop up so you can check that out. But I'm now painting that on with a liner brush, and look at how much that shows up. It just pops out anywhere where I'm not getting my whites as white as I would like and go over with this mixture and I love the results. I use this pretty much on every piece. Even if I'm not using powder blender, 
at this point when I work on a colored pencil piece I will almost always use that mixture of titanium white powder with the touch-up texture it's one of my must must haves for a colored pencil now love the results I get so now I'm coming back in between with some of my golds and browns for the shadows in between the little sections of fur so you don't want to just do everything with all of your little hairs in there. You don't want them to all be white or cream. You want to make sure you come back in between some of those with your shadowed colors. Get that variation in there. If it was all done with white, all the little hairs were done with white, he would look very flat. It's important to get these shadows in the right place to create the depth and dimension in form. You want him to look three-dimensional. So that is definitely something to watch out for. You want to watch for the direction of the that the fur is going in. You want to make sure that each strand of fur is the right length. You don't want to make super long brush strokes or pencil strokes here or it'll make him look a lot fluffier than he should be. And again, you want to watch your values. Make sure you get the dark areas dark enough. I know that's scary. It's something that we all struggle with. We want to make everything kind of mid-range because it feels safe, but that also ends up looking very boring. Get your dark dark enough and your lights light enough. I'm using a lot of oranges in here too, a lot more than you would think on something like this. You would think it would be, wow, that's fluorescent, but it's not. It really worked well with the rest of the coat colors that I'm using. You can see most of the pencils that I'm using at this stage, my light colors are my luminance. When I need darker colors, the oranges and browns, I'm switching over to my polychromos. And then the luminance work great because I don't want those to blend out anyway. So if I blend with the powder blender again, which I really don't do much on this, but when I do on those few areas, they don't blend out. I don't lose those lines. So moving on to this ear, I'm going to start by taking my luminance to get the little fur clumps. I want to make sure that the fur in here are just are actual clumps. I don't want just a million individual strands going every which direction individually. I want them clumped together, working together in these tufts. I've also got a little, a lot of these little kind of dots with black and brown for the fur that is angled at the viewer, that's pointed at you. It's not necessarily that the fur is super short there, it's that it's pointing at you, so you're just seeing the little shadow in between. So that's where you'll get those little teeny tiny dots, both on the outside where it kind of connects from the eye that comes down in that corner towards the ear, and then on some of the fur within the ear itself. Anywhere where the fur is pointing at you, it's going to just be those little dots. Using more of that touch-up texture with the titanium white powder for painting little details so it really pops. Those highlights just stand out so much when you paint them on like that. And the great thing, when you paint that on, that touch-up texture, titanium white mixture, when you paint that on, once it dries, which is very quick, you can go on top of that with another color. So let's say you needed something to be light yellow. You obviously aren't going to mix a white or a yellow paint type thing like I'm using here, you're only getting white. But when it dries, I can take a yellow pencil and go over it and it'll just stand out. It'll have that nice glow. So you can go back over it, just the same way you would do with painting. Let's say I wanted to paint a red fish over a dark blue background. I would first paint that red fish white to cover up the blue, and then I can paint the red on top, which would come out very red. It would stand out. If I just painted red straight over the blue, I would end up with pretty much a dark purple. So here with the white, I can paint the white in the little areas of hair or on the, the leaves. I can paint white and then put another color over it where I want to. Notice the spots, the way the light is hitting on the back. They fade from light to a medium orange down into the darker brown. It's not just light dark. I've got a nice transition from one section to the next, which gives you a much more natural look. The very end here, I'm coming on top with some of the magenta to really deepen up my shadows. I'm even taking a bit of a reddish brown color over some of the leaves as well, which darkens those up and gives the leaves a little bit more of a natural color just because the, that reddish brown color is complementary to the greens. And there is my finished piece. If you have any questions, let me know and I will have links to all of the supplies that I've used in the video description. Thanks for watching. Again, if you are supporters over on Patreon, the longer version of this tutorial is available for you now, complete with voiceover, so make sure to head over and check that out. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, art Q&A videos every Thursday, and artist vlogs each weekend. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, all of those social media sites are linked below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my newest work, and see real-time clips of whatever it is I'm currently working on. I'll see you guys tomorrow.
What is that orange thing behind? Okay, I try to clean my workbench off before I record these videos, but sometimes I forget. I have a bit of an obsession with lotion, like I'm constantly putting lotion on my hands and my feet. I wake up during the night and reapply. It's that much of an obsession. But while I'm at it, I may as well tell you a story about this stuff. If you are prone to getting bitten by mosquitoes, the mango body butter from the body shop will keep the mosquitoes away from you. And I have tested this several times, mostly on accident. This is the, the lotion that I wear from spring to fall whenever there are mosquitoes around, which there are a lot here, and they love me. Every time I forget to use this, the mosquitoes go crazy and I end up with bites all over myself. Last week I had like seven mosquito bites on my feet and ankles. It sucked pretty bad. All because one night I decided that I was safe enough to use one of my different smelling lotions did not work. From what I understand, mango scented things from other places don't work as well. There's something about the one from Body Shop. Best mosquito repellent ever, and it smells amazing. It's actually not labeled as a mosquito repellent. One of the employees that worked there told me about it when I was buying some, just because I like the smell. Yeah, best stuff ever. Now you know how not to get eaten by mosquitoes too.